Um, please help me welcome U of A Assistant Professor Roberto Rodriguez, who will be giving a brief introduction on ethnic studies in general. Kuali Yowali, le bueno toca, Dr. Sintli. We like to say if we were uh, going by the rules that have been enacted, I would, it would have been illegal for me to say what I just told you. And I just said good afternoon, um, and my name is, uh, and I go by Dr. Sintling. Um, I'm not actually going to talk to you about controversies, maybe if I have time. I'm going to talk to you about what is taught in MAS, and this is nationwide, but also across the street. And what I wanted to talk briefly on was that there's three concepts. One is called Inlakesh, Panchebe, and Unapku. In La Kesh, I learned, I learned it a generation ago or longer, and it's very simple, um, and it's very similar to other philosophies throughout the world. But in, in La Kesh, and I'll tell you how I learned it, I'll read it in fact. It says, In La Kesh, tu eres mi otro yo, you are my other self. I am you, and you are me. If I hurt you, I hurt myself. If I hate you, I hate myself. If I love and respect you, I love and respect myself. Now, in uh, MAS, they teach a variation of that. Um, that's the way I learned it. And uh, I think it's baffling um, that people seem to object to something like that. Like I said, I'll get to the debate perhaps later. But I wanted to present that in La Kesh. It literally teaches us to see ourselves in each other, you know, not like me first or my people first but rather doesn't matter if the person's African American or Asian whatever we see ourselves in each other we love ourselves because why would you want to hate yourself okay so that's in La Kesh it's part of uh, what uh, some people call Mesoamerica uh, there's a professor uh, a Maya scholar by the name of Domingo Martinez Paredes who would refer to that as Maya Nahua culture many, many thousands of years. I simply refer to it as part of maize culture. Uh, and incidentally, maize culture is at least 7,000 years on this continent, about at least 6,000 years uh, in what is today called the U.S. Southwest. In Bat Cave, New Mexico, maize was found, you know, again, close to 6,000 years ago. Right here on Ina and Silver Bell is considered the oldest cornfield in this country. For at least 4,000 years old. So when we talk about maize culture, we're not talking about alien culture, it is from here. The second concept is uh, Panchebe. When Panchebe has several meanings, and I'll limit it to English, but Panchebe is to seek the root of the truth. In rereading it, I also give it another definition, is to seek the truth in the roots. That is, if you ever want to find the truth, go to the roots. And I've been a journalist my entire life. And for me, um, I think we can take another concept from hip hop. It's called uh, don't believe the hype. Now, in an academic setting, that would translate to critical thinking. Pancheve. I told you there's several meanings. The next meaning is the pursuit of social justice. In other words, it's not enough to simply find the truth, but if there's something wrong, then it's our responsibility to fix it. Now, we don't tell the students to fix it on their own. You know, they come to do that, just like they've defended their own program. Nobody's ever told them they have to go to a rally, etc. And normally, as, as uh, alluded to, normally this is connected with everything that's around us, but today, I'm limiting that three hour discussion to like, you know, 10 minutes. Uh, so again, Panchebe, In La Kesh, Panchebe, and the third uh, element is Unapku. Unapku is something very simple. Um, all peoples, cultures, religions, everybody has a similar concept. Unapku, uh, again, Domingo, Domingo Martinez Paredes would translate to movement and measure. Now, if you read the literature, that would also translate to supreme being, architect of the universe. But when we have translation issues, people misconstrue. 
the peoples of this continent did not have deities in the sense that in the Western uh, realm. But I say, I mention these three concepts because all, those, all these three combine to what it means to be ser humano or what it, makes, what it means to be human or becoming human. Um, unfortunately, as you probably know, when Europeans first got here to this continent, they considered all the knowledge here as either pagan, godless, or demonic. I maintain we're still living with that to this day. Not yesterday, but even to this day. The MAS program teaches for other, another concept called the Fortes Catlipocas. I don't have time for that, uh, but uh, that's also critical and it's part of the curriculum. The part I did want to also mention is the uh, um, well before I go to that other concept is that this um, the way to explain the three concepts the Maya explained with a concept called MEN men but it's not what it sounds like what it actually is at least my translation is a combination of walking in beauty which is a Dene concept, mostly associated with women, and the way of the warrior. You combine those two concepts, and that's in Lakesh, Pancheve, and Unapku, ser humano, being or becoming human. The, 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 um, the four Tezcatlipocas, you know, that's about transformation. And like I said, I, I really, there's not much time to talk about that. The last two things that I wanted to mention was uh, creation and creation stories. As I mentioned, when people got here, they assumed that everybody was demonic, praying to the devil and all that. Well, here on this continent, there's two very well-known stories. Now, most of our students don't know about them, but one of them comes from the Popol Vuh. And in the Popol Vuh, it talks about how humans were created in a place called Tamuanchan. And in this place, the hu humans are created out of mud, out of a series of things, and finally out of maiz and it takes place again in Tamuanchan. There's also, that's the Maya version. In the Nahuatl version, this, the people are also created in Tamuanchan. You know, uh, Quelatzli and Quetzalcoatl create human beings, but they can't move. And so what happens is Quetzalcoatl is sent out to find food for the people. And what, what happens is he stumbles upon an ant and uh, the ants refuse Quetzalcoatl, the, the, the maize, but finally, they, they, they do give, give in and give it to Quetzalcoatl. Anyway, those are two very basic ideas, two creation stories. And when you look at humanity, all humanity has creation stories. Everybody has myth, narrative, and all that. But what we've seen in this debate is that apparently only one story counts, only one narrative counts. Either that, or what you do is you water it down so that apparently it matches the other narratives perhaps. What I want to say about these concepts is that they are not simply ideas, they're ethos. They're, those are things that we live by. You know, I can see in front of me students that I've known for several years who have incorporated these ideas, you know, they live by them. We live by them. So it isn't just something that we just uh, twiddle our thumbs and think about. Pancheve, in my opinion, is probably the most critical. And that's that search for the truth and that search for social justice. You know, how can that be wrong? You know, personally, I don't understand how, why anyone would take offense to that point of view. You know, again, it's about being human, becoming human, seeing ourselves in each other. What is wrong with that? I think you might hear later what people think is wrong with that. Again, our culture that we're talking about, that's supposed to be banned, Absolutely, it does not come from Western civilization. It does not come from the Greeks and the Romans. But why is that disqualified from being taught here? Because when Mr. Horn first proposed this, that's what he said, that what is taught across the street is against uh, uh, Western civilization, <laughs> that it does not come from Greco-Roman culture. And we didn't debate him on that, because he is correct about that. I, what I told you about a second ago, in La Quesh, Panchebe, Unapku, those creation stories, they're right here from this continent, thousands of years. Our children and all children deserve to know that, learn it, understand it, just like 
we should know about the, the creation stories of Africa, of Asia, of India. There's nothing wrong with that. That's all a good thing. Now, I don't know if I've went, gone over, but it probably doesn't matter. Uh, the point is, that's the point. Uh, five more minutes? Wow. I should probably read you the whole book. Well, then I told you I wasn't going to talk about the, the, the controversy, so since I have time, I will talk about it. Because it was more important initially to talk about what it is that we teach, you know? Now, what we teach, you know, I think is, it's an incredible honor. I've been associated with this program since its inception through the books that I've written, through the columns. But what I have found, and I, and I learned this through the Libro Traficante, that caravan that came throughout the country and brought us books. You know what I told them? I said, we don't need books here, and you don't need to be coming to our community. What you need to be doing is dropping off seeds. Everywhere you go, leave seeds because Tucson is, was the one exception, literally, in this country where kids, I'm talking about kindergarten, even pre-kindergarten, they were learning in La Quesh and Pancheve. Now, who in Houston or Dallas or Chicago or New York is learning about in La Quesh and Pancheve? You know what? The truth is, the kids are learning about that now because they've heard about this and they've heard about this controversy. And out of the blue, people want to know. And I think, if anything, that is the duty of people. You know, if they support this, it isn't about what's across the street. It's about literally this continent and our role in it. I always tell people this is not a, an attack on Mexican or Chicano or even indigenous studies. This is an attack on the very idea of education. That is, you cannot poke holes, you cannot make Swiss cheese out of education and say you're free to, to learn everything except what we're telling you you can't read, what you can't teach, you know? We can take your books away. And you know, I know that there's a debate as to whether books are being taken away or not. I know my books were taken away even the year before. I asked the director, what happened to my books? They boxed them away and took them away. They're, they're not even on that list of seven. Anyway. Uh, I didn't really come to talk about the controversy. I wanted to talk, again, I think that's enough. I really believe in that. You know, it's it's, a, it's an awesome concept. It's about, it's even beyond the, the idea of tu, uh, tu eres mi otro yo. It's about our relationship to all of life, all living beings. And it's also about our relationship to the earth and the universe. And again, I find no fault in that. You know, I've read Buddhism, I've read Shinto, I've read all the different cultures, religions. Everybody has a beautiful culture throughout the world. There's nothing wrong with ours. Ometeo.